Hello, I want to today talk about uh, the Gibbs free energy and how it's defined. Uh, the Gibbs free energy is really just another word for the entropy of the universe. Same thing, but it's a little bit more convenient because it involves only quantities involving the system rather than the surroundings. So what we have to do to get the Gibbs free energy is eliminate the entropy of the surroundings uh, using the enthalpy of the system. We've pretty much done this before, but let's show you again. If we know the enthalpy of a reaction, we can always eliminate the entropy of the surroundings. We've done that. Change in entropy of the whole universe is change in entropy of the system plus change in entropy of the surroundings. Now, we don't like that surroundings thing. Let's get rid of it by replacing it by just system properties. It's difficult to know things about the surroundings. It's a much easier to measure things just about the system. Now, delta S of the surroundings is negative delta H for the system on T. Now we have an expression which is completely dependent on the system. We don't need to worry about the surroundings. Isn't that marvelous? Delta S for the, for the universe, we can use that. Uh, we, can get, we can work with this quantity here and we can look up both of these in tables. Now, all the terms on the right depend on the system. Now, Gibbs noticed that if you multiply delta S in the universe by minus T, you get a quantity which has units of energy. And he defined delta G to be minus the temperature times delta S of the universe. Now, if you do that, you get this equation. Delta G is delta H for the system minus T delta S. Let's recap. Delta G is just delta S of the universe multiplied by negative of the temperature. So this is a negative quantity. Uh, if delta S of the universe increases always according to the second law of thermodynamics, then delta G must always decrease. So it's a bit more like energy. We like to think of energy decreasing, so we call delta G Gibbs free energy. It's not really an energy at all. It just has the units of energy and it's related to the entropy of the universe as a whole. Let's go back to the previous slide. That's delta S of the universe. Imagine multiplying that by minus T. Minus T times delta S of the universe gives us minus T delta S system times minus delta H on system on T times minus T. So we get the, the T's cancel out and we get, an, uh, we get a positive delta H here and a negative T delta S here. That's what we get here. Positive delta H minus T delta S by multiplying the previous equation by minus T. That's what delta G is. So since delta S of the universe always increases in a spontaneous reaction, it must be the case that delta G increases, uh, decreases. Delta S increases, delta G decreases. The entropy of the universe, let's look at an example for that. Um, the entropy of the universe in a spontaneous reaction at 25 degrees increases by 10 joules per Kelvin. How much does the Gibbs energy change by? Too easy negative 298 times 10 joules per kelvin gives us 2980 joules negative so if delta s increases by a positive number delta g will increase by decrease by a negative number usually a bigger number because the temp if the temperature is uh, bigger than 1 it will be a bigger number the gibbs energy decreases now, what's the meaning of delta G? It turns out that delta G is the free energy, that's why it's called the free energy, available for doing work. Delta G is related to the amount of work that you can get out of the system, taking into account that overall entropy must increase. So, when you want to use a chemical reaction to make a car go forwards, such as burning petrol or doing anything, 
you don't look at delta H. You do not. You look at delta G. Delta G is the amount of energy uh, change and then the amount of free energy change in the system. If that goes down, we can transfer this amount of work positive into the surroundings. So actually negative delta G is the free amount, free energy available for doing work. That should be negative delta G. How do we calculate delta G? Well, it's the same as every other property. Uh, delta G, well perhaps, except possibly for the entropy. Delta G for a reaction is delta G for the products minus delta G for the reactants. If you're talking about standard conditions, one bar pressure, you might want to stick a zero dash on there, the standard condition. So here we are. In order to calculate delta G for the products, we have to calculate delta H for the products and delta S for the products, and we have to know the temperature. And then we have to do the same thing for the reactants. So it involves two sets of quantities, delta H and delta S, uh, and then we can plug them into this equation. Or, if you're lucky, we can look some of these quantities up in tables because just like uh, delta H and delta S, delta G, delta G is a state function. So we can look that up in tables as well as S, delta H and S. So very, very useful. We can look up tables of delta G and calculate how much work we can get out of a chemical reaction.